Hello? Ron. Ron, are you there? Good. How are you doing? Doing fine. Welcome to the program. It's good to have you. Nice to see you in person. All right. It's good to see you, too. Yeah, you look a little like your dad. I, I've, uh, I was privileged to meet your dad and visit with him a few times and, uh, and several times on the phone. And so, uh, yeah, you, you've got a, some of his characteristics. And it's great. He was, he's a great man. He's, he's, of course, passed on now, and he's in heaven. What, uh, what year did he pass on, Brother Ron? It's in 99. How old was he when he passed on? He was 66 years old. Okay, so he, he lived pretty good, pretty good long, a pretty good life. Uh, you know, 70s better, 80s better, but uh, uh, you know. Yeah, he good. said he was happy. He got to do things that nobody else had ever got to do before. So amen. he was a happy camper. Amen, amen. Do you have a few words you'd like to say uh, before I, uh, you know, I can just quit talking, and you can, or we can interview you, whichever you prefer. <laughs> you just go right ahead. Uh, I'm I'm kind of new to this, so. Okay. Okay, sometimes the guest prepares uh, a little speech, but yeah, we can we can just interview. You. Brother Martin had a bunch of questions for me, and I told him those are all excellent <laughs> questions. You ask you ask Brother Ron Wyatt the second when he comes on. Uh, right. Brother Martin, do you remember any of your questions? Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. For, I got uh, for one. Um, uh, I wanted to know: was this all done by your father based on just his own resources and his own money or, and did he have like any help, uh, some donations to help him on these digs and things? Um, to start with, all of it was my father's, uh, financial, you know, stuff. Um, after we started finding a few things, after we found Noah's Ark, uh, we started showing people where Noah's Ark was, and we got other people interested. So, yeah, we did get a lot of funding from other people. Uh, Jim Baker, for instance, uh, funded one of our trips. And uh, him and his wife came over, and they filmed a little bit inside our tunnel. Wow. And, uh, I wonder what was the order of things that uh, happened. You know, you had so many of those discoveries. Which which one came first, and what was the order of those things? Uh, Noah's Ark came first, um, and we ran into trouble our very first trip over there. Uh, we got robbed by some of the people who lived in the small town we hired as uh, guides. And so we ran into a lot of trouble. And that was when I was 16. And then after that, we went to uh, Israel and we started uh, looking t for the Red Sea crossing site and the Ark of the Covenant also. So we had a couple of things going on at one time. So when we couldn't dig at the garden tomb, we would go down to... Uh, Elot or Nueva, where the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, and we scuba dived and took pictures. So a lot of them intertwined. While we were digging for the Ark of the Covenant, we found chariot parts. Wow. Because we couldn't get into the garden tomb at the time. Now, what? Uh, so, the very first thing was Noah's Ark, and then the the second thing that you realized where it was was that the was that the uh, the tomb, the Red Sea crossing, the Red Sea crossing. Okay, and then. But we already realized where the Ark of the Covenant was, but we couldn't always get in there to dig. I see. Because groups of Christians would have the place, you know, for meetings and stuff like that. I see. So some days we couldn't dig, so we would drive down to the sea and go scuba diving and do that. How far are those two places apart from each other, Miles? Wow. Uh, good question. Um, I would say somewhere around a three-hour drive. Three hour drive. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I was, I was just curious, and uh, you know, it's it's awesome to have somebody with firsthand information about all this stuff. Right. And uh, by the way, we were trying to get you on our program for about three years, and 
I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're hard to reach, but brother, brother, thanks to brother Rand, he finally persisted and finally, <laughs> finally got you. So we we're really happy to have you on, and uh, I hope you'll be a guest again. We uh, we we I'll have be a guest. glad to. Maybe next different. time I'll be better prepared. <laughs> we have a different guest every week, and and don't you know it's casual. It's very casual. We only have usually around seventy to hundred live viewers, and uh, you know afterward there's uh, it goes up on a couple different websites, and we get maybe ten thousand or twenty thousand. So it's not a huge Good group. Deal. Yeah, it's not a huge group, but but there are people that love uh, archaeology and they love uh, to hear more about uh, Ron Wyatt the first, and and uh, and you know so feel free to tell us. Uh, uh, you know how many swims did you have to do to, uh, to well, or, or let's do it. Let's do it this way. How, the second one was the crossing of the Red Sea. That was the second one he figured out. Uh, how did he figure that out? How did how did it come to him? Did the Lord show it to him, or what? Uh, well, yeah. You know, everything we did, we prayed about it very, very much. You know, and uh, we felt like that when we had three or more people together. And you ask something in the name of God that he'll answer it. And yeah. we all had very much faith in the fact that these things did happen. Yeah. And it, it was just, um, my dad didn't believe the scientific theories about them crossing through the Sea of Reeds and things like that where it gets ankle deep at a certain part of year you know we we right. believed it to be a literal miracle where he parted water absolutely and where it happened uh it was over eight miles across and god parted that water but it was very few uh swims before we found evidence that we were in the right place Excellent. we also okay. hired a small airplane to find the valley where they could have cut through the mountains to run from the Egyptians. Okay. And so there's very few valleys in between that mountain range and the Red Sea. And so we flew through in an airplane and uh, it happened that our pilot was named Moses. Wow. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> Which was That's kind great. of funny, but uh, he was a very nice fella and we told him, you know what we were looking for and he knew where to fly and uh knew of a road that went all the way through and so we followed that and then it's sort of like the bible described at the end of it you were cut off by a mountain on each side and the red seas sitting staring you in the face and uh we found uh king solomon's pillar that he put there to mark the spot where they crossed now the first pillar you found uh, was that on the uh, Egypt side or on the uh, other side? Yes, it was on the Egyptian side. Uh, okay. At the time, it was Israel, but the borders changed. Right. So it went back to Egypt. Yeah, on the Egypt side. So it was that pillar standing when you found it, or was it laying down? It was laying down. Okay. And after that, they did stand it up and put it in concrete and stood it up. So the the country of Egypt, or who who exactly stood it up? Um, I believe that the Israelis stood it up. They were back able to when they still. It, okay, that, that oh, wait, I see. In the in that year, roughly, it would have been what the seventies, probably seventy four. Yeah. Well, Noah's Ark was in seventy eight, so this would have been late seventies or early eighties. Yeah, and so the Israelis actually owned a little bit of piece of that land, is what you're saying. Right, and so they and stood. And they had to up. give it back because America kind of. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff goes on over there. Well, what was <laughs> the, I want to know about the pillar. What can you describe it for us? It was just a column, and it was made out of granite, like a reddish, red and white granite, sort mm -hmm. of, and very tall, smooth. Very nicely made. I mean, the workmanship was awesome. Was there any uh, writing on it? Any kind of marking? No, there was not. We we, we found no markings whatsoever. Uh, when we went scuba diving, though, we did find 12 altars or 12 big piles of rock under the water. At a, they were very shallow. Uh 
but it, it looked like they made one for all the tribes of Israel. Yeah, that's interesting. An altar for them. That's interesting. What so did it appear to, to look like? Sacrifice right there while they're crossing. That, yeah, because it must have took several hours for all those people to cross. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they could very well have done some sacrificing while they're of the animals uh, while they're going across. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, what about the pillar on the other side? Uh, was that one standing up, or was that one laying down also? No, they they were both laying down. Um, Saudi Arabia really doesn't want a lot of attention drawn to this. Yeah, that's the other side. It's Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and and because they're uh, they really don't want to honor the Jews or Christians or anything, right? They're uh, right. Muslims, they got their own ideas, you know, they don't, they don't right. want the truth to confuse their facts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were there almost three months, it was 78 days we stayed in jail there. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, now what, that, was, what, yeah. what was that experience like? Well, uh, you know, it wasn't very fun, they, <laughs> they didn't tell us what was going on. They just basically said that we were dead if we were actually spies, you know. <laughs> and we're like, "Hey, we're from Nashville, Tennessee. They don't. We don't have spy school there." <laughs> I'm a drywall finisher, you know. Yeah. So you know, we just tried to be real honest, and they kept separating us and uh, interrogating us for you know 78 days to wow. see if our story changed or and. You know, they fed us well and all that, but oh, it, it was just we never knew what was going on. They wouldn't let us call the American embassy or family or anything. Yeah, okay. And now the the second pillar, uh, did that one have any writing either, or was it just like the first one? The, uh, what now? The second pillar, the one on the Saudi Arabia side. Did that one have it's any writing? very, very much like the other one. So no writing. I had I had heard, and my, maybe I heard this wrong, that there was writing on some on one of them, or maybe it was nearby one of them. Uh, did you you know anything about that? Uh, no, I don't. Though okay. I know the one on the Israeli side didn't have writing. You know, now it's standing up, and there's a plaque that says something on it now, but. Uh, as far as writing on the pillars themselves, I'm not aware of it. Okay, okay. Well, maybe I maybe I heard it wrong. It's a long time ago, so I can't remember everything. From yeah, that. same here. <laughs> a long time ago. Okay, I want to. Okay, let's go back over to the uh, um, uh, the caves over there, and uh, now it sounds like that was a pretty extensive set of caverns and tunnels and stuff underneath there. Yes, it was. So. Yes. Uh, just so the audience knows, we're talking about the cave system where the uh, Ark of the Covenant was eventually discovered, which is what we're talking. We listened to in the video is your, right. uh, your father, his father, Ron Wyatt the first, talking about it. Yeah, go ahead, Martha Martin. You had any other questions? About yeah, I kind of like to know. Uh, you know, so I guess we've you 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 all were basically uh, trying to navigate these passageways, and some of them you'd have to excavate more to get to the next chamber or the next tunnel. Yeah. And uh, were, were these, like, were these natural uh, caves or were these a man-made or, or something? No, they were man-made. Okay. They, I, I, I'm pretty sure, and I believe my dad thought the same thing, is this is from where the Jerusalem had been uh, surrounded and taken captive many times and put into slavery over the years, the Philistines, and so they had pre-dug tunnels, you know, to escape from whoever was attacking them at the time, and there's theories that there's some that lead all the way down to, like, the Dead Sea area. Wow. Wow. So but the, the tunnel be, systems are amazing under there. Might be extremely extensive then. And and then a lot of them are blocked off with rocks, right? They just stack rocks from floor to ceiling, right? Yes. And and some of the rooms are full of rocks, what it sounds like. Uh, yeah, so we know, emptied rooms that were full of stuff. And wow. so you don't know if that goes anywhere or not. You don't know if you're just moving rocks for nothing for days and days and days or if you're actually right. going gonna, gonna have some at the other end of this room when you get the rocks moved. Yeah, Yeah, it was some hard work. But yeah. it was, we knew we were doing... What we should, you know, so we didn't give up hope. Now, he mentioned in the video we just played. Did you get to watch a little bit of that video? Yes, uh, I did. 
Okay. Did he mention that uh, he felt led? He felt impressed to go through that wall. Did you? Did you feel impressed? Also, you were there with him to go through yes. that. Solid, you felt that impression as well in your heart. Well. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. And yeah, and I I don't I didn't hear my father say, but we saw a root system from a tree, and there were roots protruding from the bottom of that wall. Coming from inside the wall, there was a root sticking out through the wall, like it yeah. grew through it almost. Yeah, that's through pretty a good crack. clue. There might be there might be a pretty good clue. There might be something there. Uh, yeah, like a hollow spot or something. Uh, back right. So we had a good idea there was something behind there. If there could be a tree root coming through, so. Now, just so the audience knows, we got a lot of new listeners. We've we've covered this subject in the past, but a lot of new listeners all the time. So uh, basically, uh, tell us. Uh, the significance of that location regarding uh, the, the the blood that was found, the dark, he calls it a dark uh, red or blackish color stuff. Uh, t tell the audience all about that, if you don't mind. Well, um, we uh, looked it over real well, and uh, we went on top of the hill of Golgotha, and there was a Muslim graveyard up there, and we found what we thought what we believed was Abraham's altar that he sacrificed Isaac on or was supposed to sacrifice Isaac on, on top of Golgotha. And then we saw these cutouts in the side of the rock on Golgotha to where they would have put their sign saying Jesus Christ, King of the Jews or whatever, whatever their, um, charge was you know and we also saw a huge crack coming down the front of the mountain uh where the earthquake struck when christ died and it cracked the mountain and anyway at that point that's where we believe when jesus died that his blood when the soldier pierced his side with the spear they hit his spleen and the water in the blood went down into the crack and we found the cross holes we found jesus's cross hole actually and the two on the side the thieves and so the one in the center that we believe to be jesus christ cross there cross hole it was a hole carved into the rock and i think believe they stuck the rock or the cross hole down in it to start you know hold it up and uh there was a crack going all the way through that cross hole the one in the center which would have been christ or at least the way we picture it and there was black stuff in that crack in his cross hole and so my dad did take a sample there knowing it you know had other things in it you know dirt and just but they were all there we stuck our hands in these cross holes and dug out the loose dirt right in front of those cutouts on the hill of Golgotha and that's when it came to dad that that he died right above the Ark of the Covenant. Wow. wow. Excellent. Excellent. So the significance then is that the blood that he found, he first found the room where the Ark was, and he and I encourage all the listeners to watch the whole video and actually watch all the videos about Ron Wyatt, and they're fascinating. Uh, and he first found that room, and then he realized there's a crack there right above the, right above the Ark of the Covenant, which is the top of the Ark of the Covenant. It's called the Mercy Seat. Yes. And he realized that there was uh, dried blood uh, that had ran down through that crack and dripped right on the mercy seat. And that sort of fulfills the scripture, doesn't it? Uh, doesn't there a scripture that kind of alludes to that? Yes, there is. And uh, that's that was something that amazed us because we hadn't thought about it, really. Yeah, I hadn't either. Until, until we I... saw it. And then it, we realized that... Christ, when his blood hit that mercy seat, that's when it was finished. That's right. 
you know, his sacrifice was duly done, you know, yeah. everything was right then. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And, uh, yeah, so he says it's finished. Uh, the scripture I'm thinking of, and if you have a better one, let me know what it is, brother. Uh, The blood and the water and the spirit, or something like this. Right, uh, right. That's, that's kind of the one we're to. thinking of too. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good scripture. I don't know the exact reference, but I think it's. Uh, I'm what do you not think? even. Yeah, you don't know either. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's it's in, in Paul's writings. I think, and uh, it might be John, but I think it's it might be John, it might be uh, like First John or Second John. We'll have to look it up for the next program. But that's um, exactly what we thought, and Dad also got a sample of the blood from the mercy seat. Also, besides the other sample. And tell us what happened with the blood when he had it analyzed and so on. Uh, he had it analyzed and there was no, uh, man, I'm trying to think back in biology days, you know. Um, there was no male chromosome. Except for one, right? Right. There was... It was only from the mother. Right, right, right. Yeah, so it was very unusual blood. No normal blood, I believe, has 46 chromosomes, and half are from the man and half from the woman. And uh, right. this blood and this was, was analyzed. Very different. And he had it analyzed in three different universities. And uh, they all came up with the same results. Yes. And it was human blood, right? Yes. And but, there's, I, it's actually, there's a certain thing in blood that even when they rehydrated it, it was still, uh, I don't know how to put it, except say there was a spark in it. There's some little bit of life left in, in your blood Yeah, what when I, they what rehydrated I, it. What I hear, remember Ron saying, uh, your father saying, is uh, that normal blood is dead blood, which, you know, it's anything that's been spilled out for, you know, a few years is dead, a few days right. is dead, and, uh, and it, can't, it can't come back to life, but uh, they, they left it under certain conditions for three days and three nights, and Ron was led of the Lord to tell him what the conditions would be. And then they yeah. examined it again, and it, was, and it came back to life, uh, basically. Yes, right? yeah, it actually, literally, they saw life in the blood of it. Yeah, his, and that's not, that never happened before. Uh, no. In other words, any of their experiments before. Yeah, that's so pretty that, amazing. That is pretty amazing. And I think some of the Jewish uh, scientists got uh, came to the Lord under um, because of that. Am I right? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I, know it, I know it woke some of them up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, Let's get on to, uh, uh, this is really fascinating. Okay, the uh, Ark of the Covenant. So, first, first of all, how long did it take uh, once you started doing all the excavation and going through uh, uh, and, and trying to find it? How, what was the period of time that took place before you actually did find it? Uh, it was a few years. So, a few years. and Yeah, uh, I would say somewhere three, four years. Okay, and I noticed uh, every time took a you, lot of trips, right? And every time you had to leave, you kind of had to put everything back in place so it wouldn't be disturbed. I guess. Yeah, when we found hit the cross holes, we covered them back up because we were kind of afraid that the Israelis might want to destroy them or cover them up, or you know, the Jewish people. We didn't know necessarily if they would try to destroy them or not. So everything we found, we hid. Got gotcha. you. We covered and up. And that's as the smartest thing. Could. Smartest thing to do, probably. Yeah, because you never know. There's a lot of Arab people around there, and a lot of Jewish people around there, and and neither of them, you know, care much for the Messiah and, and all that. Right. You know? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we thought about it. it. Was you know these are wonderful things, and someday we want to show them to everybody. And <laughs> awesome. so we hid them. Awesome. And I've tried to actually tell some people where the cross holes were, where Christ died and everything, and they basically didn't believe me. So well, they didn't even of, look. Yeah, there's a lot of unbelievers around. But, uh, you know, it's, it's awesome. So as, as far as you know, you're almost, uh, as far as you know, the, the Ark of the Covenant is still there in that same room, right? Yes. I'm, I'm absolutely 
sure. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear the, I want to hear the story about, uh, how, uh, when you found it or when your dad found it or I, you know, were you there at the time or, uh, no, that was when we got sick. My brother and myself, we wow. got the flu. We had been there close to about three months. You know, we we went over there for a month, flew home for two or three days, flew back, left wow. again for, you know, I would come home, find a job, have to quit it and go fly back, you know, as soon as dad yet hollered at me, you know. Wow. Well, could you tell us, uh, can you kind of like, uh, retell the story about, uh, when he found it and you know, what happened then? In other words, uh, he, he finds the chamber that the thing is in and I guess he goes in there. And uh, so I want to, I want to hear the story again, you know, what happens in there? Well, the next time I saw dad, you know, I, I went home around Christmas time that year cause I was sick. And my brother left about a week later, I think, uh, Danny. Uh, but the next time I saw my dad, he told me about it. And he was, uh, very humbled by the experience. Um, he, he didn't know what to do or how to act. And, you know, he came to tears uh, many times talking about it, how, why God would let someone like him find that. And uh, he wondered how we would be able to show it to the world because it's a very difficult place because you do have all the Muslims and the Jews. And so he, he just, he was amazed himself, so amazed that God led him to that. Even after all the other finds that we had, that was very humbling for my father. That's awesome. Uh, now, what, what uh, can you tell us the you know actual events that happened in the room where the Ark of the Covenant is? Well, you know, as as he told me when he first went in, it was all cluttered, and it had skins, animal skins, covering the table, a shoe bread, and there were rocks, and the it was the chamber was a mess. Evidently, when he went there. And uh, he got to go back in there a few times over the years. And what he said to me was, you know, Ronnie, he said, sometimes I go there and the door's right there. I just walk right to it. And he said, then other times I'll go there and it's totally shut. I, I can't even find the door to the tunnel. So there were a lot of times where even my dad himself couldn't do more, you know, um, and maybe that's just, you know, us trying, you know, he wanted desperately to show the world the Ten Commandments and the Ark of the Covenant. And uh, he, he, he was frustrated at the fact that, that he wasn't allowed to. And at one time he went in there and the whole chamber had changed and the lid of the Ark of the Covenant was removed and the Ten Commandments were sitting there and there were four young men, he said, very healthy, strong young men, but he knew they were angels. And they told him, you know, that he could see it and they held him up and let him look at him. But he wasn't allowed. They, they told him he couldn't show it to people. Okay. Was he allowed to take any video of any of that? Uh, there is a video somewhere. And I, I was talking to 
Mr. Martin last night about that. Um, hopefully, we're, we'll be able to retrieve that video from where it is. Um, he had a very trusted photographer, um, and her she has died, but her children, she told her children to let us use anything we could that of her things. And my dad trusted her more than anyone, so besides myself. And so I think that's probably where it is. Okay. So we that's hope to get our hands on it soon. Yeah, well, let us definitely let us know when you do because that'd be something we'd love to air if if the Lord leads. Sure will. Can, you know, sure will. You know, yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, it sounds to me that uh, that the uh, the angels were protecting that place pretty, you know, I guess intently. Uh, yeah. Even if you know if your dad came back and he couldn't even find it at some point, it sounds like they were, uh, you know, they were ultimately protecting that so no one. Yeah. Would bother it until the I guess the time when that's supposed to be uh, yeah. revealed, right? Yeah. I, I I had the hair on the back of my neck stand up a few times, getting over there digging for that. Uh, when you get close, it's a feeling like you've never felt before. Wow! Yeah, right. it is scary in a the way. I mean, my head standing up you right want to run, but you want to stay. Back of my neck, standing the hair on the back of my neck, standing up right now. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's 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 amazing stuff. And you know, I honestly believe God can He can camouflage it if He wants to, or you can't see it. The angels can do this. God can do it, uh, or He can actually put rock back, solid rock back there. He created this whole earth. He could easily create rock back there, solid rock, if He wants to, and nobody could get in. Uh, yeah. You know, if at he wants one time I went with a couple of people that were helping us on a dig, these two young guys uh, from California. And we went into Zedekiah's cave and we were just, you know, looking through the cave and there's tunnels in there also. And there'll be a little tunnel from one room in a cave to another one. And so we were going all through there we had been in there a bunch of times and this one time we went down through a little tunnel and we climbed back up and we're standing right in front of a doorway and had a big iron gate on it and it was sealed had a big lock on it and was sealed and we tried to look down through the tunnel and uh our flashlights, you, you couldn't even put a dent in the darkness. Wow. It just was black, as black could be. And then my dad come popping up out of the hole behind us, and he said, wow, I can't believe y'all found this place. <laughs> and, uh, but it was locked. It was shut. So there's an iron gate deep inside of one of these tunnels. Uh, we believe, locked. we believed, and my father himself believed that there are some people from Israel, what group it is or whatever, that know where the Ark of the Covenant is. There's. Also, a time my dad went over there, and as soon as he flew into the airport, he was called. Some people found him, and they said they needed his help, and he had to drag six bodies out of the tunnel system leading to the Ark of the Covenant. Six, six people were struck dead, basically, by yes. being where they and shouldn't be. He had to put them in baskets like a wire basket with a rope and he had to hold the basket upright so their body wouldn't fall out while the other people outside the tunnel pulled on the rope and pulled them out. He was the only one that was uh, anointed or qualified under God to go in there probably, huh? Evidently. Without, without he, getting struck dead. Yeah, the, the wrong people go in there, they can all wind up dead. Yeah, yeah uh, he told me if I ever 
went to go do that to be very, very careful. And uh, he told me basically that you have to pray for God to cleanse you and, you know, to be as pure as you can when you go there. Amen. Like, you know, drinking, smoking, stuff like that and just be as clean as you possibly can be. And, of course, you can't be greedy and want to find it for the wrong reason, I don't think, either. Oh, yeah, and that's probably what happened to those six guys. Uh, they, they, they probably had the wrong They may have book. wanted it for power, you know, yeah. because Israel was powerful when they controlled that or when God actually led them uh, well, that's, that's awesome, brother. We'll say, I know you got a lot of great stuff to share. We'll save it for the next show. We'll go on to the questions and comments now, if that's okay with you. Sure. All right. Uh, uh, Martin in Denver says, is that cave under the Temple Mount? Um, is, that, is that cave that you're where the Ark of the Covenant is, is that under the Temple Mount? It's under Golgotha. Yeah, the Golgotha. If that's the same mountain. It is the same mountain? I say if it is. Yeah, I don't think it is. I think it's two different mountains. I don't mountains. think so either. Yeah, I think it's two different mountains. So it's. I think it's quite a ways. I think uh, Golgotha, well, yeah, Golgotha is where they executed people, and the Temple Mount, that's where the temple is. So that's, right, I'd say it's, yeah, I'd, so they're I'd, they're totally different. Yeah. I'd say they're two, two or three or four or five or ten miles apart, and anybody right. can probably look on Google Earth to see how far apart they are. Uh, okay, brother. Actually, opposite that, the Hill of Golgotha, on the other side from the crucifixion, there's a thing called the Banana Cave, is what it's been called for years. Okay. And it's under Palestinian rule over there on the Arab side. Okay. And uh, David and Solomon are buried in there. Wow. Interesting. And they are directly adjacent, directly east to west or west to east from Jesus. Interesting. 